If you're a fan of Firefly or Guardians of the Galaxy, Arc of the Helion will keep you enthralled with fast-paced action, a stellar cast of characters, scheming villains, and great surprises. War and Alicia stood up so a galactic criminal would fall, but the closer she gets to justice, the further she is from the law. Lauren and her crew discover that the balance of power in the galaxy has been thrown out of equilibrium. An evil warlord now controls the most powerful new technology. Time for Miss Elysia to step up. The galactic underworld is no place for an amateur. And even someone as seasoned as Lauren may be out of her depth this time. There is corruption and danger at every turn, and no one is who they appear to be. Laura and Elasia may not always be on the right side of the law, but with her saucy charm and Robin Hood morality, she clearly fights on the side of justice. Arc of the Helion, Laura and Elasia, Galactic Vigilante, Book 1, written by Daniel McMillan, narrated by Jessica Green. Hello, and welcome back to another audiobook review. In today's review, I will be reviewing the science fiction adventure story of Ark of the Helion. I want to start this review by saying if you are a fan of sci fi and you don't mind, you know, somewhat shorter books to just fill some time, I definitely think this is a series you might want to check out. Now, with that said, if you have not already read the series, go check that out before you finish this review. If you have checked it out and you want to see what my thoughts are, well, let's jump right into that then. So, starting with the cover and title. And for the cover and title... I'm going to start by giving this four stars. It loses one point here for me because of the fact... I mean, the cover itself is fine. Nothing, you know, insanely special about the cover. I mean, it's really nice. It's really well done. Um, the purple really stands out quite well. Everything is greatly placed. Um, the problem I would say I had the most with this actually is the title. Being that, you know, usually when I do these audiobook reviews, I listen to the audiobook. Then I go to look up the audiobook when I'm completely done with it. I read the little paragraph that accompanies, you know, what the book's about, and from that, and then I also give it a few days to, like, you know, oh, let me wait a few days, then do my recording, and I kind of go based off what I can remember from the book, and that's why this drops a point here, because... I don't know why this book is called The Ark of the Helion. I don't remember a ship or any characters named the Helion or any objects named the Helion. I don't understand why the book was called that. So, it's basically simply that. There's no connection between the title and the book. Maybe there will be something later on, but I feel like the next book will have a completely different title. So I'm not really sure how this fits that book, is what I'm saying. So Now moving on to the writing. And for the writing, I'm actually going to give this five stars. The book was really well written. Um, it did do exactly what it promised. 
in the description. So I have no complaints or faults with the writing itself. But there are other things that I'm not sure. It's a really the writing aspect, more the story aspect. So we'll get into that later. But five stars here. Now moving on to the narration. And for the narration, I'm going to give this again five stars. Jessica Green did a wonderful job as the narrator. And if it wasn't for the fa fact that I had to double check, um, I was sure that the narrator's name was Daniel, but I kept thinking maybe it's Danielle because a lot of times writers will have narrators that either reflect their voice or the voice of the main character. And the voice of the main character here is a woman, but it was written by a man. But I give Jessica Green five stars because she did a great job narrating the voice and bringing this book to life. And there was also the fact that, and I know I say this a lot, but this is especially true here. I don't know where, but I feel like I've heard Jessica Green's voice before. She sounds just like a character I've seen in a movie or a TV show. And I just cannot, for the life of me, place where I've heard her voice before. And if it's not her voice, if it's someone completely different... I mean, when I was listening to this book, I was a little distracted because... There were times where she'd be explaining something, and I'm just picturing, like, two government detectives, like FBI agents or something, standing in a darkened office. Not a completely dark office, but in a somewhat dark office, at, discussing a case, you know? And that I kept thinking, do I know her from a police show? Do I know her from this show? What show do I know her from? I've heard this voice. It sounds so familiar. I don't know if it's her. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just someone that sounds exactly like her. But it's still. It was great. And I really liked it a lot. So. Now moving on to the story. And for the story. I'm going to give this four stars. The main reason I'm doing this here is because of the fact, while yes, the description for the book promises a fast pace, I think that actually hurts the book a little bit when it comes to the story. Sometimes things just happen too quickly. Things just get resolved too fast paced. There's no build up to the events that are happening within the book. You know, like, oh, this character shows up and the other character is leaving and, oh, well, now we got to turn around and leave. You know, that's an actual example, you know. But I think, you know, there should have been little sections where we could have dived a little bit more into some of these characters and had just a little downtime between the scenes. And there are some moments like that, but there's just so few of them. And I think this story would have benefited from being fleshed out just a little bit. You know, um... I'm not saying that the writer should... I'm not saying any writer should ever write a completely pointless scene. But, for example, I'm, I'm working on the last book in my series. And I just threw in this entire two chapters of my character doing something. Because 
I wanted to space out what's already happened, what's going to happen, and build up to that event. I feel like if I just went, oh, they're going there, 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 then it wouldn't have any build up and it wouldn't develop the characters or the emotion or anything that could really help the story. It's not a completely pointless. I mean, I keep calling it to anyone I talk to. I say, hey, I just finished the side quest and this is what happened, blah, 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 blah. But it's not completely pointless because I made this rare material that the character had to go get before they could go on with the rest of the book. Before they could get to their final goal, they have to go get this thing. So they can go get this thing. So they could achieve their ultimate goal. And that, I, in my opinion, that is something that's good. You know, it could have been, you know, talking about history or talking, you know, like, I don't know. There's a lot you could do. And I feel like there's a lot the writer could have done to just stretch this out a little bit more. Just to develop characters or the story a little bit more. Put some drama in there. But there's not. So, um, but yes, the stuff that is there, the stuff that does work, it just seems very quick. Too quick. You know. So, moving on to characters. I'm also going to give this section four stars because again just like with the story i feel like the characters were not completely fleshed out and i know this is a series and i know this is just the first book in the series but i still feel like some of these characters could have been fleshed out just a little bit better and some characters were completely, like, against, like, realistically against the kind of people they would be. And I'll actually give an example because I'm hoping the author is listening. But, for example, there is a character who is a scientist. And I'm going to try to keep this vague so... God forbid, anybody who hasn't read the book who might check it out um, will not be completely spoiled. But there is a scientist character who gets saved and then decides, I'm going to go with the main character. Now, before this incident happens, this scientist was, as far as I can tell, as far as I know, because we're never really told, this scientist was never in danger to begin with. This scientist was never in any trouble whatsoever. In fact, by not going with the main character, he could have stayed with the, you know, the main thing of the book and helped get it back up and going with this company, you know, saying, oh, well, he offered to help us rebuild and redesign what was taken. And, yeah, he works for us now. We, I mean, I'm sure that company would have made sure his safety was number one priority. So I feel like going with the main hero is kind of a not real, I mean, I understand what the writer's doing. He's building a crew for the ship. But, I mean, it just did not seem like this is the kind of choice that that character realistically would have made. Now, I mean, there's also the fact, like I said, other characters I felt we could have dived into a little bit more. Like the main character... I mean, we got a little bit of her backstory, but, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to, this is what, one thing that happened to her, and now we're not going to touch on it. All these people hate her, but why? What has she done 
in her past. You know, like Han in Star Wars, you know. He talks about his uh, light speed jump that, you know, should be making him famous. And, like, nobody knows about it. And he turns out he's not as famous as he thinks he is. Um, same with Peter Quill, you know. He acts like he's famous, but everyone's like, no, you're not famous. <laughs> but in this world, this character, this main character, is famous. Like, people know her and fear her for some reason. <laughs> I mean, I don't think people really feared Robin Hood. I mean, the only people that were afraid of Robin Hood were, like, you know, the people like Prince John and Sheriff of Nottingham. You know, they feared Robin Hood taking their gold or coming after them. But normal, everyday people loved him, supported him. He was, for the most part, a hero. But that's why I said it would just been nice to understand a little bit more. Like, what all has she done? What all has made her have this really, like, she almost has a presence like Boba Fett. You know, and I'm talking original trilogy Boba Fett, you know, when people react reacted for some odd reason to Boba Fett. You always had this sense of like, oh, he's the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. Everybody fears him. But then when you get to Book of Boba Fett, he's like, you know, completely opposite. He's like, oh, I want to be a good person. You know, I want to be a good guy. I'm tired of being a bad guy. So, I don't know. It's just... I feel like some more... That could have been what could have been missing from the story. Little breaks telling us what the main character has done. And I think maybe a little bit more convincing reason for that one character to stay would have brought the character section up to a 5 for me. But that's just my opinion. Listen to the book yourself, and you can formulate your own opinions, or maybe you've already listened or read it, and you could formulate your own opinion, but yeah, so let's move on. And unfortunately, there are no extras in this book, at least not in the audiobook version, so let's just move on to the final score. And for the final score... I'm going to give this, I know I took, you know, some points away, but I'm still going to give this an 8 out of 10. I feel like the story has real potential. The story is really good. I definitely am at least interested enough to know what can happen in the future with these characters and to learn more about them. I mean, I didn't learn a whole lot in the first book, so maybe the second book will give us more so that has been my thoughts on the arc of the helion if you have not checked this out and you would like to check this out it's available on amazon and audible it's available as a paper book a hardback a kindle and of course an audiobook so i want to thank you all so much for watching if you have not, please consider subscribing to this channel. We are about to reach 100 subscribers, finally, which I am so happy for. So, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.